Today, I am gonna share with you my tricks to make the easiest paper pots ever. YouTube is full of videos of making these homemade paper pots that make it seem a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm gonna show you the no fuss, quick way to make these up. We personally make thousands of these pots every year because we do a seedling sale where we sell these. <laughs> we sell our plants inside of these. And I personally can roll 100 pots an hour while not moving very quickly and watching television. So this is the trick to blow through this job as quickly as possible. We grow in paper pots for two reasons. The first reason is we want to eliminate as much single use plastic as possible. I know that when we send home a seedling in one of these pots, most likely it's gonna be ending up in the garbage. Whereas when I send it home in a paper pot, there's, there's nothing to dispose of. So by doing our seedlings in the paper pots instead of the plastic, it really cuts down on the amount of plastic that our farm is generating. The second reason is it grows some of the best seedlings we have ever grown. Every year, people come back to us saying, I have to get your plants, I have to get your tomatoes that came in the paper pots because they grew so much better than any plant I'd ever grown before. And it, it really is the pot that is helping us. Some of the benefits of growing with paper pots is you can make the pot whatever size you want it to be. We personally use a wine bottle and we look for one that has a really deep indent, right? Like we like these uh, sparkling wine bottles because we find the indent is a little bit deeper than normal wine bottles, but normal wine bottles will work. This is the perfect size for making a pot that will fit 18 to a tray. These fit really nicely in a 10, 20 uh, tray. So this, this is the perfect size for us. And then we can also decide how deep the pot is. Most of our paper pots are going to get planted with tomatoes. And if you plant your tomatoes deep, you can get lots and lots of roots. We can basically turn this entire space into this beautiful, beautiful root ball um, before the roots then start to grow through the paper the paper is, is delicate enough that even though it holds together nice and strong, the strength of the roots can bust through. It works so well for the tomatoes, but if we don't want, you know, if we don't want something that deep, we can make it shorter, we can make it whatever size we want. And if we don't want it this size, there's lots of different things that you can use. You could use a small jar to create a smaller size Anything, anything you have in your home, cups, things like that, you just roll it on the exact same technique and you make your paper pots. One of our favorite things about the paper pots is you plant it directly into the ground. As I said, those roots, they're gonna grow straight out of here because it's just going straight into the ground. You're not disturbing the roots at all. It makes it so they don't suffer from the transplant shock that they sometimes suffer from when you have to yank them out of those plastic pots before getting them into the ground. So because of that, I feel that it really helps the plants to get established nicely. Some people have concerns about the strength of a paper pot, but I'll address that after I show you how we do this. Okay, Serena, roll me some pots. The equipment that you need to make a paper pot is something to roll the pot onto and newspaper. What you want to use is non-shiny newspaper. You wanna use, you know, the, the, I don't know, what is this called? Newspaper. Newspaper. <laughs> the size that I personally like to use for my paper pots is half a page. Um, this is a flyer, so it's a little bit smaller. If I had a really big full-size newspaper, you know, if I got the New York Times, is that a newspaper? I don't even know. Um, I'd maybe cut the full-size pages into thirds instead of halves. Um, but as I said earlier, the size of the paper that you start with will determine the size of the pot. So, you know, depending on what you're making, cut it to size. I lay the paper out flat, long, long ways away from me. And then I take my bottle. And what I want to do is I want to place it so that I have have a little bit of space down at the bottom. You know, the equivalent of almost the entire width of, of the bottle. 
And then I want to try to get it as straight as possible. Um, and if you have a wine bottle that has a label, you can kind of use the, the label um, to eyeball, you know, especially with these clear glass. So you can make sure that you're rolling it, um, but it really doesn't matter. You can see, I just, uh, I made it not, not exactly line up. I am not gonna stop reline up this pot and redo this. It doesn't matter, that little bit of sloppiness. And then you wanna take the bottle and start where the flap is, push in and just go around in a circle, pushing in, and then you just twist it off the bottle. Sometimes it can be staticky, so I find the twist motion can make it pull off easily. And then there you go. It's, that's as simple as it is. The other videos that I've seen have made this rolling process a lot more complicated. They say then at this point you should fold down a lip. Um, they make it a lot more complicated for how to fold in the bottom. Um, and, and I don't feel you need to do that. But honestly, like I'm, like, I'm pushing with all my strength of my hand against this. There's, it's not opening. It's not falling apart. You know, like you throw it, it's like, it's fairly strong for what you need it to be. I just roll it, I leave it like this until I go to pot it. But the important step for kind of stabilizing the whole structure of this pot is when I go to pot these, I add a scoop of dirt into the bottom and then I take my fist, which is why this size is perfect, and I punch down on the bottom. This then stabilizes the entire base. Now, now it's, it's nice and stable, right? And it's also really strengthened the bottom. Um, that little bit of compaction into the newspaper, the crunching it down makes it hold its shape. When I roll the pots, usually I just, I throw them into bins. They start to unravel a little bit like this. And this, it, it really isn't an issue, right? Because when I go to plant it, I like put it, you know, yet again, I put it down, you know, maybe I even hold it in hand and you can see there's the, the bump inside, right? That is, that is what I'm flattening by compacting that together with the dirt. You know, the dirt is just because I need a base in there anyways. The, it's just, you know, it's eliminating an extra step of putting, compacting it down and then putting some dirt in to create a base. I'm just doing it all at the same time. Cause that's basically, that's what makes these simple and easy. I'm eliminating any step that I don't need to do. I don't need to worry about how I fold it into the bottom. I just need to do it as quick as possible. I don't need to worry about how exact the rim is. I don't need to worry that the top is weak because it, it isn't, right? As the quickest I can make these, it's, it's not gonna make much of a difference in the long run out in the garden. Okay, let's do the rolling one more time so you can see the movement. You take the paper, you put the bottle down, you roll it up. You fold in the base. You twist it off. Again. We're gonna make a shorter pot. We're not doing tomatoes. This one's for pepper. We don't need deep root balls. Roll it up, press it down. Okay, and now we're gonna mess it up, right? We didn't leave enough space on the bottom. We weren't paying attention. Oh no, I go to fold it, it's not big enough. Just twist it in the same way that you pull it off. Now there's enough space on the bottom. The easiest way ever. <laughs> My goal in all gardening, and especially here on our farm, is to grow things the easiest way possible. Whenever I go to do something, I always take a moment to think, do I have to actually do all of the steps that I'm about to do? And then I eliminate everything that isn't actually necessary. By doing that, I get way more time, which means I can grow way more stuff. So with these paper pots, this is all you need to do. Anything extra that you do, you know, is just kind of for peace of mind. Part that I 
find takes the longest time with paper pots is the actual potting of the plant. Um, the, the, the strength of the paper pots isn't really provided by the paper. The strength of the paper pots is, is the compaction of the dirt. Basically, you're using the paper pot to mold yourself a soil block. So when I go to pot up a plant, what I need to do is I need to be making sure that I'm compacting the dirt in around the sides of, of the seedlings that I usually pot into here. Um, you know, in the same way that I'm packing down the dirt on the bottom, I want to make sure that all the dirt inside this pot is compacted. So with a plastic pot, what I would normally do is I would put the plant in and then I just kind of quickly push the dirt in. With the paper pot, I need to be a little bit more delicate. I need to kind of be supporting the sides while pushing the dirt in. And I find because of that, it takes about twice as long to pot up a paper pot as opposed to a plastic pot. This is probably not going to be a problem for you um, because how many, <laughs> how many of these are you going to be doing? A hundred? You know, if it, if it takes you, if it takes you two hours to do a hundred um, instead of an hour to do a hundred, it's, it's probably going to be fine for the home garden. I find it's very limiting for me here on the farm, but only because we're doing thousands. But despite that, all the benefits of the paper pot more than make up the time that I have to spend. You need to make sure that your paper pots are staying dry until they're fully planted. The weakness in the paper is when it gets wet, it starts to, you know, it starts to weaken a lot. So you want to make sure that you're using dry potting soil <laughs> when potting them up. You want to make sure that you're not putting these down in a puddle because <laughs> that's the point at which they're going to then start to rip. Once you have everything packed in here, you know, you're still going to be able to handle it. It's going to be no problem. But then I advise putting it into whatever space you're going to keep it in. We use these trays. We have a ton of these on the farm. This, the paper pots using the wine bottle will fit 18 to a tray and I will, you know, fill up the whole tray. And then at that point I water them. And then I want to be a lot more careful when I'm handling them. They, they support each other really well and they also make it so they share moisture between them. I find they're really easy to water um, just, just because I can you know, fill the tray, they suck the water right up. It's easy for me for watering, but until the roots start to fill in the base of the pot to strengthen you know, the whole structure of, of the plant and the pot, I find it's best not to handle them if you don't need to. I pot my tomatoes as little tiny seedlings, about four weeks old, into the paper pots, and then I usually give them another four weeks to grow before planting them out in the garden. If I was to pot them, water them, and then try to fuss around with them, moving them here and there in those first couple days, they, there's a good chance that when I went to, if I go to pick it up, you know, especially because I use such tall pots, maybe I grab it at the top and, and I just, you know, the entire top of the, of the pot <laughs> breaks away from the base, right? Because at that point, um, the paper's gonna have started to disintegrate from how wet you're keeping everything. But because we don't handle them, that's never an issue. And these seedlings that we are growing for the farm, these aren't for us to carefully handle, to plant out as transplants for the farm. We sell these. So these, when, when it comes to time to sell them, we are picking these up, we're passing them off to people, they're handling them when they take them, they're handling them when they're getting home and still no problems. So don't be concerned about the weakness of the paper pots. Um, it's just, it, it needs a little bit of time. While watching this video, you could have made this many paper pots. <laughs>